You know, people have asked me, when did I first identify as an artist? And the answer is there has never been a day of my life that I haven't been a creator. I've always craved taking experience further. I don't want to just be alive and move through life. I want to ingest it and I want to transform it and I want to bring something back to it. And so my desire to be an artist and to be a creator is to actually have agency, is to be involved in the creation of reality. I'm Kimberly Trowbridge. I'm an artist based in the Pacific Northwest. And my work for the last eight years has really come out of the colors and the landscape of this area. However, I really consider myself a figurative painter. And so when I'm ever I'm out in the landscape, I'm really looking for a theater of characters and interactions. And so I'm really in some ways looking at nature through the lens of historical painting, the Renaissance and Baroque period, and looking for just these fun characters that kind of line up and tell a story. And so in some ways, the past eight years of doing the field work have been a way of creating the theater that I hope the figures will come back into and populate. The reality that I create through my work is creating an open door for the viewer. I want to invite the viewer into the language that I'm using to build the thing. And so paring things down to essentialized shapes and colors and forms, and in a way not cleaning up behind myself, but allowing that raw data to sit clearly next to each other is in some ways an invitation to the viewer to participate and to be able to recognize the vocabulary through which it was built. So I am definitely a formalist. <laughs> I go to painting and the lineage of painting because I love the boundaries of it. I love the rectangle. I love dividing the rectangle into its component parts and physically getting to feel how it inherently likes to be divided. That to me is the beginning of the narrative of painting. That I'm not just bringing an idea and landing it randomly on a surface, that it's the surface and the object itself that is so integral to the making. And so I love the history of art and Western art in particular, which is what I, my lineage in particular is part of. And so I love working within those boundaries. To me, that is not restrictive, but rather creates a theater of tensions that keep me on my toes. This particular show that is up is kind of a shifting point in my palette, my use of color in a way, and that is very deeply tied to the places where I've spent time over the last three years. So the Mojave Desert uh, near Joshua Tree, uh, Tiaton, so Eastern Washington and the Kowichi Conservancy area, and then also Wyoming when I was there doing a artisan residency at Gentel. And so many people that have followed my work and know my work over the past several years associate me with the rich dank greens of the Pacific Northwest, which have kind of become my thing. Um, but this body of work or these bodies of work coming together were really actually a hunger to get out from underneath the canopy of the cedars and the dug firs and to spend time in places that had a real uh, sense of horizontality, where there was a horizon line that I could see, bigger open skies, and in particular, starting with the Wyoming pieces, a, a flirting with a yellow-violet complement set. And so moving into this, what I almost think of as a more spiritual realm of color that uh, shimmers in a different way. And so really hungering for this kind of lightness or breadth that that horizon and that palette can offer. And so a lot of the field paintings here in this show are about celebrating 
not just that shift in place and palette, but celebrating what actually happened to my animal biological body by spending time in those places. I think some people might think it's a leap for me to move into the sculptural realm. For me, it's not. It's a hunger that is kind of underlying all of my paintings. Uh, the way that I do use shape, uh, the way that I build form, uh, like you can see very clearly in my life room paintings of the figures and my landscapes, that the way that I place colored shapes next to each other is in the service of building the illusion of form. And so this desire to actually let it spill out into these essentialized forms of the sculptures uh, feels like a very natural outpouring for me. I'd say the biggest transitional moment for me where I felt the universe saying yes to me instead of saying no <laughs> would be with my time at Lodell Reserve on Bainbridge Island. So getting to be an artist in residence and live in the gardens, work from the gardens, and then extending that residency into a two-year fellowship where I got to return to the gardens over and over and then have that body of work um, culminate in my exhibition at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art was just a dream come true for me. And it was a dream that I narrated, that I created for myself, that I knew that I needed to do more work there. And I asked permission to do that. And I was told, yes, do this. And so that whole experience at Bloedel Reserve over that two years really showed me what truly my artistic practice is and how all my different talents and interests can live within this kind of larger sphere of how I think of a creative practice, where it's not just the paintings, it's the life that surrounds the paintings and makes the paintings. I want there to be joy and play in the ability to participate in one's own life. That's what painting is about for me.